Good day everyone and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we will be talking about how to use Freestyle to add some colored lines to your characters and scenes. Now um, a few things about what colors can mean for a character. Um, the colors can definitely have to do with your style in general. For example the feature films that Disney used to make, uh, you know the 2D ones, if they really went all out they would use um, colored outlines which really added a, a sense of fanciness to it, you know, a little bit of extra effort. Uh, it can also have to do with um, telling us more about the character, and it can also have to do with um, expressing something about the environment that the character is in. For example, um, if the character is in like uh, some sort of surreal state or something, the character can have like bright blue outlines or if the character, like in some of the Tom and Jerry cartoons, goes into a blueprint, the outlines can be white, you know, that sort of thing. It can dictate environment. Um, a few things to note about freestyle and outlines and colored outlines is that your shadows and your normal diffuse colors cannot have an extreme contrast. If that's the case, then your colors will um, just invariably turn out to look kind of black in general you'll lose that softness that the um, colored outlines tend to bring, which is also part of the character. You know, the character can also be portrayed as being more gentle and um, kind if they have colored outlines versus Heyman over here, which is generally the villain in Esther, but I'm going to show you what he looks like if you color him uh, and you give him a smile instead. You know, you'll see, you'll see him instantly warmer as a person. The colored outlines are not supposed to be the focus. If your colored outlines become the focus of the scene, then it's no longer about your characters and it's no longer about the story. Having said that, sometimes in musical things like, uh, for example, the Fantasia series, um, colored outlines can definitely be part of the story. So we have a few methods that we can use. We can use groups, we can use line sets, we can use modifiers, we can use... Uh, the material defined colors for our outlines and we can also use a global colored outline for our characters but that is just the the gist of it so let's get to Heyman being colored look at that see instantly is a more likable person but you can still tell that he's not um, all that friendly if I can say it like that because of the the black around his eyes he still has a bit of a, an ominous sense to him. But you can see the difference immediately. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing, the difference. So I'm going to be showing you how to produce these kinds of outlines. So let's get into Blender. So obviously we're going to be kicking off with Heyman as is. So what I want to do is I want to save this project separately because I want to keep this version of Heyman as it is and I'm going to make a tutorial version. That is good. So let's make him um, a happy person instead of a crazy person. And let's just get these eyebrows to be more happy than psycho. Like so. See, instantly, nicer person. Okay, first things first, we need to up the environment lighting. If we don't do that, the colors tend to kind of just fade away into the shadow. Uh, the, the outlines have to be dark enough that they actually form a border for your character, but they can't be so in sync with the shadows that they just vanish, or too dark that they just appear black, then we're wasting our time. So you have to up your environment lighting or your whatever method that it is that you use to create some sort of ambient light. So in this case, I'm going to be using about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 for the environment lighting, just so he's nice and well lit. But that does mean that his skin is going to look really, really pale. So I just need to turn that a little bit down. And we are good. As you can see, I've already added some really crazy colors so that I can demonstrate to you how you can get different colors based on material selection. And let's get to this little area over here. Just want to get that is already turned off. Okay, so first of all, we have our material modifier. Now, as you can see, I have two over here, but the first one works with the diffuse color of your material. 
So if you were to go to your material, the diffuse color is just this flat color over here. It does not include your textures. It does not take them into account. It is just your diffuse colors. You can also use your specular color or whatever the case might be. There's quite a list. I'm going to show you the list. Obviously, we're not going to be going through all of them. I'm just going to show you how to add some color. <laughs> this line color one is the color from this slot over here, which we'll get to later on. Okie dokie. So as you can see over here, I'm using add. Now, the reason I'm using add instead of multiply is when you have black as your base and you just add your diffuse color slightly over that, then you get just the right tone for the um, outlines. Whereas if you use something else like multiply over white or something like that, then the colors just stay their neutral shade, then you might as well just use mix. Which you can also use with the black underpinning if you want to, to just adjust brightness as well. I prefer to just use as um, add with the influence on 0.4. It, it just gives a good general result. You can use 0 0.3, 0 0.25. You know, it, it's, it's up to you, it's up to the characters that you're working with and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, so it's really basic, not super thick outlines, <clears throat> nothing fancy. All I did was I reduced the um, geometry sampling to one because it prevents that kind of soft blurring that it tries to do between the chaining. I don't like that, so I just turn this to one. It's usually on 10. Okay, so let's, let's get rendering. And there we go. You see, almost immediately we have a really nice softness to him you know he's a really he looks like a nice guy over here i mean he really does but we have a few issues look here on the fabric itself you can see that it creates this sort of a dashed line that is not good because it has the um, potential to flicker with every frame of movement because it moves uh, um, at varying distances from the camera so the way to fix this is to give a color preference or priority. This we do by just changing this priority. It doesn't matter whether you change this color right now or not because that's not the color it's going to be using. So we're just going to set it to one. This is for the eyes because you can see it's a problem with the eyes as well. And of course we're going to be doing it for the outfit colors as well. So if you were to render this now, you will see that the eyes are nice and black, and of course we don't have this little dashed line anymore. Look at that. See? Now the, the red got the priority, and the green is no longer interfering. And the same with the eyes over here. Now issues with stuff like this can easily be solved with the distance from the camera, generally. So that you can find still under your render settings, but under strokes. There's a sorting one over here. Leaving it on mean typically gets you the result you want. I mean, look at this line, these lines over here. You can see that they're intersecting with the hat. And that's just because Freestyle doesn't consider the distance from the camera to really define what goes on top of something else. So pay attention to this area of the mouth and pay attention to the lines that come from the top over there. Now you can see it's been removed. Looks much, 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 much better. You can also see on the mouth, it's also fixed. Okay, one thing that I um, that's not super obvious when you're starting out with Freestyle is this material boundary little tick box over here. What this does is it creates various seams similar to the dashed line that we had before. So if I were to turn this on right now, with this you'll barely notice it, but let me show you what it does, okay? So I'm going to turn it off for now, and I'm going to change the thickness of the line by using this along stroke feature, and I'm going to be making it fairly intense. So I'm going to be making it the line thickness at the max to be like three, because I want you to see what happens with the seams over here. As you can see, it's a nice single line that goes from the top to the bottom over there. I kind of like this low detail, semi-painted look. It's kind of charming in a way. Now I'm going to just turn on this material boundary, okay? See, we have that dashed issue back if we turn that on. 
So if you like this look and you want to go for this look, you're welcome to. But again, you do set yourself up for the possibility of a lot of flickering on your lines. So I prefer to just leave it off. And I'm going to turn this back off as well. <laughs> I do like the thick outlines though. They just look terrible on the eyes. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like if I keep the whole thing on three. Kind of like it. Yeah, it doesn't look so good here. I think you need this whole along the stroke thing. Yeah, you do. Otherwise, it's way too intense. But again, see this little chaining issue over here. So I would, I would honestly and truly not recommend that you use this along stroke if you're planning on doing fine details like I did on the face. So I'm just going to turn that off and get back to color. So the other option we have is global color, which means we add no modifiers. That means Blender ignores whatever color we have selected and we just get to use this base color over here. So let's make it something really bold, like this super bright blue. So you see that can also be used for suggesting that traditional look that they use to say that a character has been sucked into the computer or cyberspace or whatever the case might be, everything was this lime green over a black background. So you can use this for something like that. That again is how color lines relate to environment. But I'm going to just switch this back to black. And of course, we also have the option of selecting manually the colors for our outlines by going to each material that we want to have a color and just changing this freestyle line set up over here. You do get this in cycles as well, so don't think that this is just a Blender render tutorial. This absolutely applies to cycles as well. So let me just turn this modifier on. As you can see, it's just set on line color, which is its default anyway. Uh, you can just leave it on mix because, of course, you have already selected the color that you want. So let's get to rendering. There you go. You see, now I, I chose some really crazy colors just to <laughs> illustrate the point. As you can see, it works. It absolutely works. But I do think it's horrendous. Finally, we have our line sets. Now, every line set has a freestyle line style that you can apply to it. That means that if you use groups and you can use different line sets to add different lines to the same material. So you can have like a blue stripe, a red stripe, a, yeah, a yellow, green, whatever, on the one jacket using different line styles. So let's say this first one is just our diffuse color that's been added over the black. And let's say we want to add like green stripes to show what the mesh looks like. Stupid example. So let's say line set two would be to say mesh lines. Okay. We're going to use, let's use group. Um, but instead of using border and silhouette and crease, we'll just be using um, no external contour and we'll be using edge marking as well. Let's just turn off edge marking. No, we have to leave it on. Let's have to leave it on. Okay, I think that should cover it all. Okay, let's just change the color. Let's make it like a, a bright green that's fairly thin. Uh, thickness, let's make it one. And it's fairly strong. It's not doing any funny stuff. It's got rounded edges. It's got an edge mark. Uh, I think we're good. So let's hit render and see what we get right off the bat. Okay, at the moment it's not showing anything. I think it's because it's on the bottom. So I'm just going to say external contour as well. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this jacket the only thing that's going to be showing green lines. Okay. So I'm going to be grouping it and I'm going to be calling this mesh lines. And I'm going to tab into it. A, control E, mark freestyle edge, just like that. So everything is selected. 
And of course, back on mesh lines, we have only edge marks selected so that everything shows, and of course, mesh lines. So if we were to render this now, you will see that the jacket shows its mesh lines. Boo. Look at that. And the best part is, is you still get this softish kind of outline because this one still has the edge mark turned on. So you see, um, Freestyle can definitely give you some amazing, amazing results if you just play around with it a little bit. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys are able to use this in creative ways with your projects. Have a great one and God bless you.